This is Dr. Rico Short, the Root Canal, specialist to the stars, the grace, life teacher, the inspirational motivator for you on this wonderful Wednesday. Now let's get to the root of your problem. Today, I want to talk to you guys about distraction and discouragement. Distraction and discouragement. Did you know those two things are the main things the enemy will use to get you off your God-given destination? Distraction and discouragement. Let's talk about distraction. Distraction is something that's used to take your eyes off what's more important. The enemy will use distraction um, in your finances, where it seems like, man, every time you you know come up on your finances, bill do, and the enemy will tell you, you see, God isn't real. If God was real, He wouldn't keep you struggling financially. Distractions will come up when it seems like every time you um, take two sto- two steps forward, you take four steps back. Distraction. When you getting up in the morning and you feel this pain in your back, you're like, oh my God, what is that? And you think the worst, distraction. When you lose focus because you're watching what's going on on somebody else's social media, when you're looking on Instagram, you're seeing somebody else's vacation that's nicer than the one you had. Some of you guys had a staycation. And you're looking at somebody else that went to Dubai. You're trying to compare your staycation to somebody else's vacation. But little do you know that person who went on a vacation probably can't even afford it. They they was able to do it off credit cards or PPP money. Oh, man, I'm in somebody's Kool-Aid now. And the real winner is the person that had the staycation because they were smarter with their finances. Oh, yeah, I'm going to let that settle in a little bit. Distraction. So let me ask you, what's distracting you? I'm going to tell you one of the things that distracts me. Oftentimes, you know, when I get into this workout mode, I'm trying to see, okay, how can I get my body more fit? And everybody has these points of distraction in their body. Some people are distracted because their legs are too big. Their legs are flabby. You know, some of the women, they work out so hard so they can have toned legs. Some people have distractions in their arms. You know, they have the fat behind their their elbow and they trying to get that, you know, to go away. (laughs) And some people get so desperate, they use liposuction (laughs) and all that kind of stuff. Some people have trouble areas like me in my midsection. It's like, God, how many setups I got to do to get rid of my love handles? (laughs) And then what we do is I'm just going to be transparent. You're going to be like, you know what, man? This ain't working. It's not happening fast enough. You know why? Because you're focusing on what's seen versus what's unseen. Did you know Jesus talked more about those things that are unseen, more important than the things that are seen? You say, Dr. Short, what do you mean? All right. Have you ever heard of the gift of the spirit? Love, joy, peace patience those things can't be seen you can't see those things like a new car or like a six-pack but jesus said these things are more important than the things that are seen do you know what the kingdom of god is it's god's system is how he does things you can't see that with your physical eye you need your spiritual eye to see that but yet god says that nothing is greater than his kingdom because in life you can do life the world's way or you can do life God's way now the world's way you're gonna see all this stuff money is a measure of success what kind of car you drive is a measure of success your neighborhood is a measure of success But see, Jesus doesn't focus on none of that. And again, I'm not saying none of that stuff is wrong. If you're blessed and God has blessed you with a nice car, a nice home, living in a nice neighborhood, great. Use those things as tools. I use them as tools to say, man, look how God is. Good God is, man. God has blessed me with this nice home. God has blessed me with this nice practice. God has blessed me with great kids and a great family. 
But God does not want those things to have you, to possess you. Because I can tell you one thing, man. Money is a great servant, but it's a terrible master. Ooh, come on, Holy Spirit. I'm going to repeat that for the people that's watching me in Australia right now. People that's watching me in Asia right now, in Europe. Money is a great servant, but it's a terrible master. Some people are ruled by money. That's all they think about is money, money, money. And the Bible clearly talks about the love of money is the what? Help me out out there, Facebook fam, Graham fam. The love of money is the root of all evil, not money. Money itself is neutral. Money is neutral. Money can help people. Money can hurt people. It depends on how you use it. I don't know why I'm out here today, but I know somebody right now is having issues with money. Some people got a lot of money and don't know what to do with it. Some people don't have enough money and trying to figure out how to get it. See, people will misquote the Bible. You got to watch out, man. People will miss. Oh, you see, you got money. Oh, man, money is the root of all. No, it doesn't say that. It says the love of money is the root of all evil. And that just simply means that instead of God being on the throne of your life, you put money on there. And like I said, money is a great servant, but it's a terrible master, man. The last thing you want to do is be chasing money because I'm going to tell you, man, and I believe, and I can't remember where it is in the Bible, but those people who just chase after money and not after the things that are unseen, not of the thing that God said that's going to be able to really bless us to make a difference in our life, it's going to be like having holes in their pocket. I'm just telling you, it's going to be like, man, the more money you make, it's going to seem like the more money going to go out. Because God never designed that in his kingdom. I hope you're getting something out of this today, man. Because some of you guys out there are trying to figure out, man... I just feel so bad because I have all this money. A lot of people, a lot of Christian people were taught in certain churches, man, when you have a lot of money, man, that's not going to make you humble. You know, they equate being broke with being humble, man. There's nothing cool about being broke. I've been broke before. I've been in a bunch of debt before. There's nothing cool or nothing godly about being broke. Let me get back to my topic today. What I was talking to you about was distractions, man. And the enemy will use anything to distract you, anything to scare you. He'll have you scared to send your kids to school. Oh, well, you know, you know, you got the coronavirus out there. And then you worried about that. Oh, now we got monkeypox. Oh, man. Ooh, you got monkeypox out there. What are you going to do? Are you going to vaccinate your children for everything? Are you going to send your, 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 your kid to school with a gallon of Clorox in their backpack? <laughs> See, these are the things that are unseen, man. And these are the things that we as spiritual beings, we that trust God, man, we can pray over our children. Yeah, I know you can't pray in school and all that kind of stuff. You're going to public school, but that's okay. But guess what you can do? You can pray over your child. You can pray that, that the angels of God will protect them. You can pray that the Holy Spirit will, 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 will stay inside of them. That will prevent any dis-ease from attacking their body. You can take communion with them. <laughs> oh, yeah. You can, you can even anoint their head with oil, man. I, I get up sometimes in the morning, man, and I just feel in a funky mood. I feel like the enemy is attacking me in, in some kind of area. Man, I anoint myself with oil. That's right. I do it. And some people say, oh, well, Dr. Shore, it doesn't take all of that. Okay, well, that's you and your life. But I'm going to roll with God. <laughs> and I believe what the Bible says about anointing my head with oil so that my cup runneth over. And surely and goodness and mercy shall do what? Follow me all the days of my life. Now, you don't have to apply this to your life, but I am. And guess what? And I believe that I'm going to see more fruits from those things that God that tells me to do. Distractions. Because at the end of the day, you can be distracted to the point where you feel like, you know, God doesn't care about you. 
you can feel like you get so much distraction that you get discouraged and you just want to throw in the towel and then you want to start blaming everybody for excuses. Well, you know what? My mother wasn't there. So therefore, I'm going to do this and that. My father wasn't there. That's why I'm going to do this or that. You know, you come up with all these excuses at the end of the day. You got to look yourself in the mirror and say, am I doing the best I can with what I have? And you got to answer that for yourself. And if the answer is yes, man, go ahead and throw yourself a party. Celebrate it because I tell you what, once you're doing the best you can, what you have, God is going to honor that. And he's going to bless you. He's going to protect you. He's going to provide for you. He's going to open doors for you. He's going to open the windows of heaven for you that there may not be enough room to receive the blessings that he's going to give you. And those blessings isn't just for you, beloved. It's for you to be a blessing to somebody else. It's for you to encourage somebody else like I'm encouraging you right now. So I just want to leave you with this, man. Don't let the enemy distract you so you can get so discouraged that you want to quit. Because that's what he does. He wants to steal, kill, and destroy from you. And the way he do it, does that initially is by distraction. And one of the main ways he's distract you is by telling you that you're not good enough. He's always going to find something to put in your head that say you're not good enough. You know what you did last night? See, I thought you said you was a Christian. You know what you did last week? You know what you did last year? You know what you did in 1992? <laughs> He's always going to try to replay the reels in your life when you were at your lowest point and try to match that to your identity. No, that's not who you are. You are the beloved child of God. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not belief, beneath. You are a lender and not a borrower. Man, the favor of God is on you children you you are designed to make a mark in this world that can't be erased you are designed to change the atmosphere at your job in your home by speaking the word of god over those situations that seem like they're not going to change some of you guys are facing situations right now in your marriage that it feels like man this is never going to change man he and she's going to stay like that and that's not true you speak the word of God over your spouse, over your marriage. And the enemy has to flee, man. I tell my wife all the time, I say, you know what? I need encouragement. I need to be encouraged. Because if God put a picture in my mind. Think about this. Just, just, just think about this. Think about a cork being in a bottle. All right? And as you pour water into that cork, what happens? That cork rises to the top. Likewise, as you pour goodness, as you pour kind words, as you pour, you know, uh, positively into your spouse, that's what's going to cause him or her to rise to the top. And it's going to be effortless. That, that cork isn't struggling to rise to the top. It just does what it's designed to do. And that's what the word of God does when we speak it. The word of God says that it can't come back void. It has to go out and do what it was designed to do. Don't let the enemy discourage you and make you distracted. I just want to pray with you. Lord, in the name of Jesus, though that can hear me and see me right now, whatever is coming against them, Lord, that's distracting them from your truth and your word, I bind that in Jesus' name. And Lord, I ask you to release favor upon them. Lord, release your blessing. Lord, release the gift that you've given them from the foundation of the world. That, that gift that you've created them to do that no other person can do. Lord, let them stand out in on their job. Let them stand out in their family. Let them stand out in their community so they can be a beacon of hope because people are hurting right now around them. And they can ask them, hey, why do you have so much joy? Why do you have so much peace? And they can share the word of God with them. They don't have to be a pastor or evangelist or a preacher. They can just tell them their experience. They can give them their own testimony. Because we all have testimonies. We all have faced trials and tribulations, Lord, that you've brought us through. You've brought us just like you brought the children of Israel on dry ground through the Red Sea. You've brought us through Red Seas. And people just need to hear our testimony so they can use it to help them with theirs. Jesus name man love you I'm praying for you have a wonderful Wednesday if you got something out this message like I always say share this message click like heart it star it whatever you got to do go and check out my other messages on YouTube page 
Go and check out my books. I have two inspirational books out there. One is called Getting to the Root of Your Problem, 365 Days of Inspirational Thinking. Have you heard about the book by Rick Warren, Purpose Driven Life? Well, I got my version. <laughs> it's called Getting to the Root of Your Problem. I promise you it will bless you. And those who want to go deeper in the knowledge of God and deeper, those are facing storms in their life, you can go out there and check out my other book. My second book is called In the Eye of a Storm, 45 Days of Turbulence and Peace, available on Amazon and everywhere where books are sold globally. Grace Life.